We are a blended family. 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 And we are a blended family. Hi, we're Doctors Larry and Carol Snap. We're glad to have you with us today. about our event that we're having um, on October 22nd at the Glendale campus here uh, from nine in the morning to four in the afternoon. It is a one day training for premaritals. It's um, called From Single to Covenant. And uh, it includes your workbooks and it includes breakfast and lunch and your certificate that you can take to the courthouse to, to get your marriage license. It certifies you've been through a uh, premarital training. So uh, if you're interested in this, uh, Larry will tell you what our website is, so you go on the website and register. We still have room, so we would love to have you join us and several people here in the Valley that are going to be attending this event. This is an all uh, members of Glendale Campus uh, Dream City Church. It's, it's open to everyone. It's a community event. And here's Larry to give you the website and to start the teaching on Celebrate Your Differences. Thanks, Carol. Uh, our website to register for the premarital uh, seminar on the 22nd is blendedfamiliesministry.org. <coughs> just click on uh, either the couple or single PayPal button. And you're all set. Okay, so lesson number three of 12, celebrate your differences, or as I like to call it, who's normal is normal. Um, okay, so <clears throat> as we've been talking before, especially last, last week, we can pretty much get everybody that's married into a blended family in, in some way. And part of that is every marriage is a blending of two families. Uh, and I guess you could, with the exception of two orphans happen to get married. Because then <laughs> there's no family, so you're kind of starting from scratch. But in most cases, every marriage is a blending of two families. And you know, obviously, some things are some things are good. Other things, maybe not so good. So you've got some positive input and some negative input, and that creates your belief structure. You know, so now you entered into a relationship with somebody else. You get married, and you've got your belief structure, and they have theirs. So. Individual differences between spouses, as well as the differences in the extended family, you know, everyone is unique. God created everybody to be unique. No two people are exactly alike. Even identical twins are not 100% identical. Christian Living Radio. Sometimes they're pretty darn close, but... At some point, there's always something that's slightly different, and you can tell them apart. Now, 
We usually start off here with Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So it's important to remember, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We're made in the image of God. It's a wonderful thing. We get bogged down in the fallen world that we live in because of sin, and Satan is out there trying to destroy us and constantly accusing us of all the negative stuff that we have in our life. Things we've done, things that have happened to us, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's important to remember we're actually wonderfully made. God made us in his image, and that's a wonderful thing. So, when God brings two people together, they complement each other's differences. Now, not everybody gets together because God brought them together. Sometimes people get together, and they have no relationship with God at all, so they're in the flesh all the time. And, you know, it's usually a lust thing or... Uh, tendency kind of thing, like somebody just doesn't want to be alone, you know, those kind of things. So they, they just want to be with somebody so they're not alone. <clears throat> All kind of things like that. If you married without consulting God, there is a good chance that you, in your flesh, got the wrong one. It was not who God had for you. <clears throat> However, if you did pick the wrong one, <clears throat> it is possible when both spouses give their lives over to God that he can still use that marriage for his glory. You can then enter into a covenant and be in his grace and his blessing and he can use you for his glory. <clears throat> so just because you started out on the wrong foot doesn't mean you have to stay on the wrong foot. <clears throat> was a good one to talk about the premarital thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pre <laughs> premarital counseling is extremely important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that you have an opportunity to discover some of the differences between you and your spouse before you enter into a covenant with them. <clears throat> but what happens more often than not is people spend all kind of money, all kind of time on the wedding without really making any plans for after that. The video just quit. Just like it did last week. Well, that's only got 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Video is ended. First week, we're great. All the time. Last week, we quit early. It's a system of the church. We never know. Well, it looks like it's back on from this side. That's why Kenyano, he can edit it because he's got so many of these. He can do it. It's a lot easier. Plug in. <laughs> Before he puts it out 40 other places. I have a question about the premarital counseling. Okay. Yeah. So, like, say you've been with somebody for like two or three years and then you decide to get married. You've already been with them, living with them, built a life with them. You know your differences, so why do you go through the extra counseling? Well, in the state of Arizona, you have to have a certificate of some kind that you have gone through it. I believe it's um, necessary in the state of Arizona. You have to go through some kind of premarital training okay. to get a license. That's not true in every state from what oh, okay. here. But that's one reason. Another yeah, reason is maybe some things that the premarital counseling um, book, workbooks or the counselors that do the premarital will bring out issues you hadn't thought about. And it's not a big deal, but yet maybe things that they know down the road right. will come okay. up. For example, we had 
we still still have them. They're still good friends of ours. Pastors. They were in different ministries, but they came to us for their premarital counseling. They've been together for three years. They've been in ministry for a long time. And um, their comments to us when they came to us to do the premarital counseling with us were, we don't have any issues. We're fine in all areas. So, you know, we're, we'll go through the workbook with you, but there's nothing wrong. It's okay, that's fine. We pointed out the fact that when you get married, it's a different scenario for the ex-spouses. Because now it's not like, oh, well, they're in, the, in that person's life for six months. They'll probably be gone in two months after that, so we don't have to worry about it. But once the marriage license is signed and they know, oh, my God, that person's going to be there forever the relationship changes. And that's what happened with them. Because she made the comment to us, um, the future wife, she said, I get along great with her. Never had a problem. And he said the same about her ex. We don't have a problem in that area. We're good. I said, that's wonderful. Doesn't always happen. But if it does, this is what we suggest you do. Yeah. They came to an event, another premarital we were doing, six months after they got married. And they said, can we speak to some of these couples that are premarital? Because we need to tell them what we went through with our exes after we officially got married. We hadn't a clue that that would happen until you mentioned it to us. We are so glad you told us because we knew how to handle it. We knew how to take care of it. So you just never know. You never know right. what we're going to say okay. that might help you. And that's what we do this for, is to help. And when, when you sign the paper, that's when the spiritual warfare starts. <laughs> yeah. So it's just good to get prepared. You know, most people, well, you guys do, but most people don't even think about spiritual warfare. So they do all this stuff for the wedding and everything, and then boom. Now there's a marriage, and now there's a covenant with God. And Satan's like, ah, something for me to mess up. Yeah. And this couple couldn't believe it, and they're still in ministry, but they'll tell anybody that they talk to, you need to go to the snaps with the premarital because they're going to bring out stuff. It just a second ago, I forgot who you were talking about. Oh, you didn't remember? Well, now I. Yeah. 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 Personally. <laughs> They're still pastors. They're yeah. lead pastors in the main church. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, it, it is important, partly because once you get married, that's when the spiritual warfare starts for real. You know, we weren't really doing anything Christian for 23 years, right. and then it all kind of blew up. But then we started getting Christian counseling, became Christians, and then that's when all the warfare started. You know, when when you're kind of in Satan's camp anyway, he doesn't really have to mess with you that much. So, to me, that's kind of the difference is when you make it official, and you've signed the paper, and now there's, now there's a covenant, it's like Satan's like, okay, i got to mess that up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's when the warfare starts, is when the ink is dry. But, uh, basically, what we're just saying here, even when there's a, a marriage without God in it, it can be redeemed. We've seen it. We know. And it can do some awesome things. Now, this is one of my favorite questions. Okay, I got an apple and an orange. Which one is right? Okay. They're both right. It's the wrong question. Yeah. Right? They're both good. They're just different. And that's what we're talking about here, is who's normal is normal, okay? Nobody's is correct. It's just, this is what I believe, and you believe something different. So how do we put all that together? Um, well, Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen: iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. However, when iron strikes iron, sometimes sparks fly. So you can start a fire, <laughs> 
if you're not careful. Um, the best marriages are the ones where spouses learn how to have a productive discussion rather than just having arguments. And we've talked about this a lot. Be focused on the issue. Do not let it get personal. Right? Here's the thing that we're going to talk about. Stay on the thing. Don't. You know, it's like what usually happens is there's like one volley of each about the thing, and then it gets personal. And then it just stays personal. You know, your mother wears army boots. <laughs> Something like that. Now, you, now, it's, now you're talking about your in-laws and stuff. And it's not about the thing. But when you try to promote in the premarital, you take the best of, of your um, your yes. normal yes. and and their your your normal and your spouse's or future spouse's normal, and we make a new our normal. We set new traditions that our family is going to have, and that's a the really the joyful part about being uh, having a new marriage. Your normal, his normal, and this is what our new normal is going to be. And uh, just make new traditions and enjoy making it. You guys are in charge. Yeah. And it's really exciting when you're doing it that way. With, with the right attitude, right? You're going in, and you're, you know you're going to be together for a long time. Hopefully. So you take the time to really get to know your spouse and what they're good at what they like, you know, the gifts that God has given each one, and you try to figure out who's been, who's good at what, and, you know, it's just because I'm the guy doesn't mean I do the accounting. Maybe I'm lousy with numbers, you know. It, who's got a good way of doing something? But ultimately, each normal, like Carol said, needs to be an hour normal, but that hour normal needs to be a Christ-like normal, right? So, like in the pyramid, everybody's trying to be more like Christ, right? And then the closer you get to him, the closer you get together. But that's kind of the whole point is you, you take what each one has been gifted and try to discover what those things are and not just say, well, here's how I do it, that's the way we have to do it. My way is the right way. So Let's him and I are live by what? It's supposed to be live again. The video went off. Uh, well, it looks like it's still working. It doesn't say it's a wrap. It says live right. online. So it should be all right. I'm sorry. That's fine. So we were, you know, we thought you say you, th you say things like this, and though you automatically start thinking about you know well, what is it that I'm good at. But what is it that he's good at? Right. You know, I'm good at cooking. Mm -hmm. I wish that he was good at cooking because I don't always like to cook. Right. So what I've started doing was incorporating is having his company in the kitchen and him helping me with things, yeah. even if it's the small stuff. And, you know, right. I find that extremely helpful, beneficial with his presence there, right. even if he has no idea what he's doing. We, really well. <laughs> we had a time that we would, um, when we were trying to find things that we could do together and not kill each other, <laughs> we took, and that was our assignment each week to each other, to try to find one new recipe a week. And then we would get that recipe and we would decide, okay, what part do you want to do and what yeah. part do I want to do to make it, you know, we had to work together to complete that recipe. But another thing that you might do, um, does he like to grill at all? Uh, he, just started this year when we got a grill for as a housewarming gift. Okay. Well, that's but something you can learn. I'll mash up the, the burgers and I'll season the burgers and oh, I'll just yeah, kind of but it. he doesn't love the grill. That's still him <laughs> helping and you do oh, the yeah. salad and the veggies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if he likes, enjoys it. I mean, But you have to learn, but there are... Um, charts and stuff, hamburgers, medium, this many minutes, and what, you know, but it, and yeah. steaks, Larry's got, oh, we've been married 43 years, he so, finally got the steaks. Him and I don't make the steaks, Nathan makes our steaks. Oh, okay. Nathan loves to cook the salmon and awesome. the steaks, yeah. so that's Nathan, and then awesome. anytime I'm cooking, Juliet or Taylor wants to help, so yeah, we have plenty of, of help there, so he's good awesome. at building, 
things, I get too frustrated, or I, I'm the one that it's good enough. Yeah. And then he's Most like, enough. nope, I'm going to go to Lowe's, and I'm going to get this so we can do it this way. I'm like, I want to be done. <laughs> That's so. like our son-in-law, John, five or six trips a day to Home Depot when he's working on something. It's never <laughs> just one. Yeah. No. That's only you. It's, it's at least two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not three or four. But, you know, I, I think... You, you go there, you forget something, or you get it home, and it's not the right one. Yeah. But this is the journey yeah. that you're sharing. And they're not arguments. They're not something that we, f- you know, fight about or anything like that. It's more like, I know that he doesn't like it or is not very well good at it. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, but I want help. So can you do this? Mm-hmm. Well, that kind of thing. So there's sure. a lot of things I can They do balance us. Oh, yeah. That I don't necessarily like to do. Dishes. Yeah. I have a dishwasher now. Yeah. I'm so happy. You know, all that all that kitchen stuff I can do. You can. I just well don't. his mother was a home ec teacher. I don't really like to. I you love to grill. I can do the grill, that's no problem. I flipped burgers back in the old days. Right. And chicken. Fried chicken. chicken. Well, fried chicken. I worked at one of my first jobs was a was a fried chicken place. Worked at a Hardee's, flipped the burgers. You know, those kind of things. So I, I mean, there was food experience early. Yeah. But yeah, my mom was a home ec teacher, but I was going to learn how to cook. <clears throat> I even learned how to sew, but I totally forgot that. So. No, you did. <clears throat> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I could even set up a sewing machine anymore. <clears throat> but anyway, so the the productive discussions rather than arguments is is huge in that you allow the other person to say what they need to say without getting all emotional about it it's not a personal attack hopefully right right it's always about whatever it is you're trying to talk about that's the key but that's how spouses that have been married for a long time they they've learned how to do this Probably by trial and error, with a lot of error, right? And then after a while, it's like, well, you know, the whole covenant mentality is, well, you're not going anywhere, I'm not going anywhere, let's try to figure this out, (laughs) right? Without getting ugly. So stay focused on the issue, don't let it get personal. Yeah, so your whole life experience is your normal. It's my normal and your normal needs to become a new, our normal, which should be more Christ-like. And then things work. Okay, so when you're having one of these productive discussions... Uh, keep in mind Ephesians 4 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Speak life into your marriage. And we've said it before. Nobody likes being married to a critic. <laughs> right? Nobody wants to be criticized all the time. It, it just it's terrible. It's, it's just it's different. It doesn't mean that it's wrong because they do it different than you do. Yeah. It's just different. Yeah, that's the thing. Just remember, your way of doing things is just different. It's not right versus wrong. Right? And one of our mentors had taught us many years ago that life and death is more important than right or wrong. So, you know, there's there are times when it's better you know, to, to not die on that hill. It's just not that important in, in the long run. You know, in the grand scheme of things, me being right about that one little thing is not that important. <laughs> right? It, it's more negative for the relationship than like the, the whole conflict resolution thing that we do. Um, but speak life into your marriage, not death. Don't be the critic all the time. Look for reasons to compliment. And it's that kind of mentality. When you're looking for reasons to be 
complimentary or just to say something positive. Uh, it's important to know when not to say things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Quiet. You know, it's like you can't say anything good, don't say anything. I like how you didn't clean up earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, when there's a, you know, this whole blended family thing, it's a blending of two families, right? There's mom and dad and the grandparents, and sometimes, when blended, there's almost always an ex somewhere. <clears throat> we have to have boundaries. So there are in-laws and outlaws, and we need boundaries. Healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries, especially if there are major cultural differences. Um, the extended family can put a lot of negative pressure on this relationship because of the cultural differences. They want things done a certain way. Uh, and that may or may not be a Christ-like way. So it's important that this, this marriage, this relationship is the one that manages all the things that are going on inside the home. There's the inside the home stuff, and then there's the outside the home stuff. And it's very important that the marriage relationship is the one that manages all of that stuff. Right? You don't want the outside managing the inside. Uh, extended family or friends sometimes want to tell you how to manage your marriage. And how many times says, like a divorced friend giving you marriage advice? <laughs> you really want to take that? Are they the expert? I mean, they, they, they're the expert in how not to do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yep. Um, so be careful on who you listen to. Uh, keep it Christ-centered. Build your own normal from the best of each of your norms. That's why it's not like, okay, here we go. you got to take some time, have the patience, and that self-control through the Spirit to really get to know this person, really get to know what they're good at, look for things that they're good at, even if maybe they don't think so, and, and edify those things. Right? That's, that's speaking the life in, you know, hey, you're really good at this, or I think you could be good at this. Let's try that. Yeah. Also, if there's um, in-laws or real close friends that are consistently after you, like, okay, I know you had a situation last week, and uh, how did you handle that? And the personal things need to stay between you and your future spouse and God, and, and maybe counselors if you have them. But we suggest you take it right away from them and say, you know, we're still praying about that. Thank you for reminding me about that. Um, but we're still praying about it. And just let it go. Kind of you're taking it away from them. Hopefully they don't bring it up again. Because some family members just keep hammering on it. Well, what did you do? What did he say? What did you say? No. They don't need to know. It's like there's always this one person out there that likes you have to, to take it away. Um, now, one of those other kind of things that happens you know, when, like, when you're just about to get married or you've been married for a little while and now you have a group of friends. This is Christian Living Radio. And all of a sudden, one of that, one of the couples in this group of friends ends up getting divorced. Oh, yeah. um, who gets to keep the friends? That's in our book. Yeah. Right? Because... Divorce. Sometimes this now single person kind of is a threat to other relationships. Not always, but sometimes. But keep things Christ-centered, build your own normal from the best of each one's normals, and a Christ-like normal should be the goal for the new our normal. And those are things like Larry just said that people don't think of, but that does happen. When there's a divorce, 
the other couples that maybe you've been going to dinner with and stuff, all of a sudden they feel threatened. Oh my God, she's mm. single. They don't. They don't know who to stay I, friends. I don't want her around my husband, and they. Yeah. That's when you learn who you who your true friends are. I think but, he kind of went through some of that stuff with the friends portion of it, but I was.
in order to be the peacemaker, you have to be able to speak truth in love into a situation. And it's, you know, like, here's, here's what God says about that kind of a thing. And it's not, maybe not necessarily your idea of what should happen. It's, here's what God says. And because when you're trying to resolve a situation between you and somebody else or two other people, the last thing they want is your opinion. <laughs> right? Who made you the expert? Who made you God? And that kind of stuff. Yeah. Here's, here, and I don't know that I would even say, and here's what God says about that. Just instead of speaking chapter and verse over somebody, just speak the principles. Right? The principles that are in the Word of God. Are, are what resolves the conflict without, especially if somebody's maybe not even a Christian in there. So, uh, anyway, so uh, have that Christ like attitude, forgiveness, grace, mercy. Uh, try not to pick up the offenses. Again, look at your spouse as somebody that has a different set of gifts, not that they have a wrong set of gifts. And do what you can to be the peacemaker, not just the peacekeeper. Because speaking from experience, you can only do that for so long, and then everything just kind of blows up. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Kind of a shorter class today. You know, it's, we want to make sure everybody understands that it's it's not about right and wrong. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Apple, orange, they're both good. They're just not the same thing. So, all right. Um, again, our premarital thing is coming up on the 22nd of October, 9 to 4, Glendale Campus at the Bridge. Uh, go to blendedfamiliesministry.org to register. And next week, I believe, we're talking about the mantle. Yes, my favorite. So... We will be talking about the placement of the mantle next week. We'll see you there. Thank you for tuning in today and joining us for Blended Families Ministry with Drs. Larry and Carol Snap. We hope you've enjoyed. It's our sincere prayer that this class blessed you today. There's many more to come. So keep tuning in and make sure you share this with somebody you know uh, and tell them about Blended Families Ministry here on Christian Living Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Goins. Signing off. Until next week, may God's best be yours. Join the best positive Christian lifestyle movement on the air at Christian Living Radio.